Hello and welcome to Campus Currents, where we help you navigate the tides of campus living. My name is Chloe Platt. And I'm Dylan Berman. Today we're going to be recounting some of the Spectator's top stories of the past few weeks. Grocery prices are rising, and many students are feeling the effects. The U.S. Bureau of Statistics says that grocery costs have gone up for years now. Prices have inflated a whopping 16% since 2021. As a result, many students without meal plans are struggling to find affordable food, especially in Capitol Hill. Luckily, there are several resources available for students looking to save on shopping. One of those is the Seattle University Food Pantry, which is located in the Pickett Pavilion next to Bellarmine Hall. The Food Pantry allows NESU students to access groceries free of cost, making it a key resource to fight food insecurity. Many SU students are also eligible for SNAP benefits, or food stamps. College students may be eligible for SNAP if they meet income requirements, qualify for work study, or work 20 plus hours a week. You can find more food security resources from the SU Wellness and Health Promotion website. The 2024 U.S. presidential election is right around the corner, with just two weeks to spare. The polls are historically close in the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump. With little time before November 5th, many organizations are racing to get as many people ready to vote as possible, even at SU. SU's Residence Hall Association is one of those organizations. The club hosted a political pin-making and voter registration workshop this past week. First-year economics major Joshua LaForce attended the event and even registered to vote in the process. He said, quote, I didn't know anything about getting registered before this. It was really easy, though, especially with the events they're holding right now, end quote. The Political Science Club is another organization working to get students registered. The group even offers registration forms that can be filled out in under five minutes. Voting for the first time can be difficult, but the SU community is ready to assist any students who are seeking the extra help. Learn more about your voter status at votewa.org. Well, Chloe, it sure is a big year for American politics. It sure is, Dylan. It's also a big year for Seattle's waterfront. Let's check it out. There have been a lot of changes to Seattle's waterfront. In addition to a new overlook, the Seattle Aquarium has built their new ocean pavilion. The pavilion features ecosystems from the Southwest Pacific with spotted eagle rays, goatfish, as well as an Indo-Pacific leopard shark. The new pavilion is part of a larger multi-year program that the city of Seattle has invested $806 million in, with $54 million going toward the Seattle Aquarium. The building design emphasized the use of sustainable materials in collaboration with Coast Salish tribes, but the Seattle Times noted the new building substantial energy usage and emissions. It has been one year since the start of the genocide in Gaza. Campus clubs and professors are working to ensure that the SU community is educated on the conflict. Professor Nova Robinson hosted a teach-in on the recent invasion and bombings of Lebanon by the Israeli military. An October 10th rally in support of Palestine was hosted by Students for Justice in Palestine. Recent changes to the on-campus demonstrations policy meant that Jewish Voice for Peace, a group prevented from speaking last year, was allowed to speak. Multiple groups on and off campus continue to push forward to keep the movement alive. After over a decade of planning and construction, the Rapid Ride G-Line bus route is finally open to the public. The bus, which travels west and east on Madison Street, connects some of Seattle's key neighborhoods, including downtown, Capitol Hill, and the Central District. The new line stops right in front of SU, and many students are taking advantage. Fourth-year accounting major Ann Lee frequently commutes on the G-Line. She said, quote, the G-Line makes it much more convenient because it drops me off close to campus, unlike other buses, end quote. The bus route operates 24 hours a day. Buses run every six minutes during most of the day. Every six minutes? That's pretty snappy. Pretty snappy indeed. You know what else is snappy? What? This transition. Let's get into sports. It has been a tough month for Seattle pro sports. The Seattle Storm lost in the first round of the WNBA playoffs with two quick losses to the Las Vegas Aces. In baseball, the Seattle Mariners never made it to the postseason. Their poor batting performance and management drama led to an unfortunate end on September 26th. Former manager Scott Cervais found out he was being fired from a phone notification. The Seattle Reign, our National Women's Soccer League team, lost to Utah and got knocked out from the playoffs at the same time. A hat trick from Chloe Lacasse gave our city a trio of postseason knockouts. Things have been looking a little bit better on the SU campus. With a last-minute goal from Kaylee Wilson, our women's soccer team won on October 12th. This is also head coach Julie Woodward's 354th win. 
She recently became the winningest coach of all time at Seattle U. I didn't know that was a word. We know. The Red Hawks are third in the conference as they head into the final stretch of the regular season. The last game of the regular season will be on October 26th. On October 2nd, Seattle University hosted their conference rivals, Grand Canyon University, along with California Baptist University for the first swim meet of the 2024-25 season. This is the last one for the Red Hawks swim program in the Western Athletic Conference, with athletics making the transition to the West Coast Conference, or the WCC, next school year. The WCC does not have a swim program. Fortunately, SU announced that swim will be joining the Big West Conference. Grand Canyon University will also be making the transition with the Red Hawks, keeping the conference rivalry alive. No one's a bigger hater of the GCU Lopes than me. Well, I guess SU and GCU won't be e loping anytime soon. Sometimes you say the darndest things. Sometimes I do. I guess it's just a part of my character. Speaking of characters, let's hear about RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Live. On August 8th, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 9 Live was brought to Seattle's Paramount Theater. The All-Star cast was composed of six drag queens who chose a favorite episode from the season to inspire their dance numbers for the night. Three audience members were also able to partake in their own drag competition. They were given two minutes to get into quick drag before performing a lip sync in hopes of progressing to the next round. A night full of sexy, daring performances followed as the queens flaunted their dancing prowess, sharp wit, and abundant charisma. Hey, Dylan, do you know what I like? What? A nice PSL. Same. I love when my job gives me paid sick leave. I wish I got some here. No, I, I don't think that's what our reporter Layla was reviewing when she went out into Capitol Hill earlier this week. Take it away, Layla. Not very pumpkin -y. On a scale of one to five pumpkins, I would rate this. I'm here for the pumpkin spice, and it's just, it's not, there's no pumpkin or spice, and it's a little disappointing. We are at our second spot. We're here at Half and Half Donuts on East Pike. We got another eight ounce oat milk pumpkin spice, and they make it with, it's kind of simple. They make it with real pumpkin, sugar, I like it. It's subtle. It's not too, like, spicy. Personally, I like a sweeter PSL as opposed to a spicier one. Um, and I would give this, I'm gonna say four out of five pumpkins. We have gone to our third and final place, Nectrola. It's not a pumpkin spice. It's a pumpkin pie latte. I think it's pretty good. I think out of five pumpkins, I would give it four. That's all. Currently showing at the Seattle Public Theater is the 90 minute production titled The Park, which was made in collaboration with Matcha Theater Works. The show features Bev and Libby, who meet on the same park bench for the entirety of their lives, outlining the importance of people coming together and sharing moments. Portraying the significance of cycles, connection, and the struggles we all go through, the park will be showing until November 3rd. This fall, the National Nordic Museum opened a new exhibit titled A Place of Opportunity and Transformation, with pieces from artists Natalie Gerberg and Hans Berg. Each of the three sections revolves around one of Gerberg's claymation videos, and is accompanied by Berg's sculptures. They each contain a similar cast to the claymation films, with dark and intentional lighting to immerse the viewer. Reactions to the exhibit varied, with some viewers describing the scene as beautiful, delicate, and ethereal, and others saying it was nightmarish and some sort of dark plot. The exhibit will be open until October 27th, and tickets can be bought online or upon visiting the museum. Well, Chloe, it sure has been an eventful first few weeks of news. It sure has, Dylan, and we have more news coming up throughout the quarter. Make sure to tune into Campus Currents and read the Spectator copies around campus or online at seattlespectator.com. And most importantly, stay, stay current, current Red, Red Hawks. Hawks.